Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me this evening. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michelle Clark, and I'm going live up until the 15th of October to just raise awareness about Baby Loss Awareness Week, which is this week. Started yesterday, today is day two. Thank you for those of you who joined me last night. I did say that I would come live again and be earlier, so here we are. If you're watching, please say hi, please tell me who you are, where you're from, and if you're watching on the replay, thank you, please hashtag a replay. Thought I'd rock the afro today, I'm really feeling the afro. Okay, so let's get started with an introduction. So I've told you um, who I am, why I'm doing this. I lost my daughter in 2017, her name was Destiny. And my mission now is to help other parents, to help other mothers, to help other fathers that are going through or have gone through the same thing. Because it is such a taboo subject still. There are very little people out there to reach out to um, that really, really understand. And there's very little people that are there for people who are struggling to speak about you know the issue because it's just such a taboo subject and you know I'm just breaking the silence by doing this because no one should be made to feel that way losing a child is hard enough so let's get straight into it because this video will not be as long as last night I've made some notes to keep me on track so today I'm going to be discussing with you exactly how I coped with losing my daughter how I got through my miscarriage if you can use the word cope but before that I would like to start off by saying thank you to those people who have reached out after my video yesterday, to people that have shared it, to people that have um, commented, to people that have inboxed me. And I have the permission from one young lady who I've known for quite some time now, and she said that I can read out her message. So just bear with me, I'm going to read that out to you now. Okay, so... She's put, hello, hope you are good, Michelle. Your little ones are so cute. Watched your video about preeclampsia and it's great you talked about it. I had it with my first from 33 weeks. He was delivered safely at 36. They weren't sure at first and then it really came on. I had the blurred vision, but I thought nothing of it. And the swelling, stupid when I look back, I was in ICU for two days after delivery. He was fine. It was me. My kidneys started failing. They do say it can affect the baby or the mum, as you said. I have, I have kidney disease now because of it, but I have had two more safe deliveries. I would love another, but not sure it's advisable. Blessed as I am to have three... Blessed I am to have three when some people can't have one baby. Thanks for talking about it. Keep well. So I just thought that was lovely. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for watching. I just thought that was really, really nice of her to just inbox me and just say thank you for touching on preeclampsia. Thank you for just talking about it. And, and not everybody has, you know, miscarriages or pregnancy complications because of preeclampsia but I just really wanted to touch on that because that's what happened in my case and because again that's not really out there it's not really spoke about it's something that I really wanted to touch on so that if it does happen to anyone then they at least know someone that it has happened to because it just you know it's always nice to relate to somebody yeah okay so we've touched on the inbox message let's go straight into how I coped so the long and short of it is, Facebook, is that I didn't cope. How do you cope with losing a child? I didn't cope. I struggled um, in the hospital after having her. We were there for three days, I think it was. I struggled on the way home. I had the biggest panic attack just before we were discharged. Um, and I kept saying to the nurse, I can't breathe. And I really thought I could not breathe. I thought something was wrong. I thought, here we go more complications but little did I know that was the start of my health anxiety which is what I mentioned yesterday 
and you know they were lovely they took me to one side and they said look you need to get some fresh air so hubby took me out of the, the hospital which had a walk around the grounds we came back in and i was trying to gasp trying to get in as much air from outside as possible and nothing was helping i really was struggling to breathe but at that time i didn't know that i was having a panic attack because before I had lost destiny, I was not prone to panic attacks. I'd get anxious, but anxious in a more healthy way. You know, you have a little stomach pains and, you know, we all get anxious at times. But this was nothing like I'd ever experienced before. So we returned home and I had some family members waiting for me because obviously they were there looking after the children. And I just remember coming in and sitting on the sofa opposite them. And my eyes were either closed or I was just looking down. It was just horrible. It's just the most horrible feeling coming home from the hospital without a baby. And what I will mention is, remember, I had my baby. I actually still had to give birth to my baby. So the other ladies in the hospital, when they saw me walking around in labor, there was a lot of smiles and a lot of, oh, you know, and hubby was rubbing my back. And But they didn't realize that the baby inside me had already died. And obviously it wasn't something I was about to shout out and share with the whole hospital. It, you know, it was hard enough knowing what had happened. But just having to go through all of that, go through the labor and, and everything else. So no, I didn't cope. I didn't cope at all for a very, very, very long time. And there's something that I'm going to share with you in this Facebook Live that I don't think I've shared with anyone before. Um, very, very open. That's me. That is me. I'm going to share it. It's a message um, and I'm going to read it. And it's something that I read when I was really, really, really struggling. So I'm going to get onto that soon. Okay, so what I want to do now, before I get onto that, I want to read you another letter. So last night I read a letter to you um, from the hospital when they sent me to get the 24-hour ECG because of the heart palpitations. And this one is basically from the hospital confirming... It's the general office and bereavement office at the hospital confirming Destiny's funeral. So this one reads, Dear Glenroy and Michelle, I write to confirm the funeral arrangements for Destiny. The funeral service will be held in the East Chapel, Bushbury, on the 21st, sorry, the Tuesday, <laughs> the 31st of January, 2017 at 9.15am. So it was quite an early one. And I remember them saying to me, because I was in such a state, Try and go for the earliest time because you are not going to be able to make it through the day if you're having to wait for the funeral. And I'm telling you what, I'm glad we listened because it was horrific. So, yes, we went for the earliest one. Hi, Zan. Thanks for, thanks for watching. 9.15. So the funeral will be carried out by, and that's just the name of the, the uh, funeral directors there, which I won't say on this live. And it's got their contact number. Please arrive at the crematorium at 9am, where you will be met by our hospital chaplain. And he was lovely. He actually came to the house a few days before the funeral just to put everything into place, take um, the song choices from us and just ask if there was anything else that we wanted for the funeral. He was absolutely amazing. Good evening, Stacey. Nice to see you. We understand that on the day of the funeral, you may feel that you are unable to attend the service. Now, I'm going to be totally honest, like I said, I did not want to go to the funeral. I did not want to attend my daughter's funeral. Hi, Anna. I was devastated. I was in a state of trauma, like I've already said. Hi, sis, Jade. You OK? Hi, Rachel. It was horrific i just can't use that word enough it was awful it was like i was living inside of a nightmare and you just keep thinking yeah, i'm gonna snap out of it now everything's gonna be fine um but it wasn't it was real so yeah it was really really hard so that's obviously why they put it in the letter because they understand that some people really are not able to attend and it's not because they don't want to they just maybe physically can't they then went on to say if this is the case Please telephone us as soon as possible after 8.45am and we can inform the chaplain. Please be assured that the chaplain will still conduct a sensitive service. 
I wish that I could play you the songs. The songs were absolutely beautiful, but I don't want Facebook to shut this live down because I'm doing this for the purpose of helping others. So there will be a way. Uh, maybe I'll put them on my YouTube or my blog or something, okay? If you require any specific music requirements, please contact, and again, it's the name of the funeral home, at least three working days prior to the funeral. Should you require any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me on the number above. And then the lady signs off. I remember, good evening, Helen. I remember sitting in the bereavement office with Glenroy um, to go and sort everything out, to basically pick a funeral date and everything else. And I'm telling you, wow, one of the hardest things I've ever done. Do you know when you're doing something but you still can't believe that you're doing it? That was me. I was sitting there and I was like, is this really happening? Bear with me one second, guys, because there's something that I want to read to you on the um, laptop. And I don't want it to die before I get a chance to. So just bear with me. I'm going to plug it in. Hubby, if you're watching this, where is your laptop charger? Bear with me, guys. Because I really want you to... I'm sharing this for the first time, so stay with me. I haven't shared this before. Do, 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 do. <sighs> Can't see it there. Aha. Uh -huh. I know where it is. Bear with me. Guys, I'll be right back. Right back. That's what you get for not being organised. Here we go. Right then. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for staying with me. Let's just plug this in. Because what I'm reading to you is on the laptop. And we're back in business. Hello. Thank you for staying. Okay, so. As I said, horrific time. Horrible. Couldn't cope. I'm not going to lie and say that I could because I couldn't. And there's no shame in saying that you could cope. Hi, Alison. Thank you for watching, sweetheart. Let me give you a wave. Hi, Sis Simone. Thank you for watching. Okay, so I've read that letter out to you. Now, I'm going to tell you how, you know, leading on from that, I got to a place where I could cope. Listen very carefully. I have never shared this with anyone. Okay, so I've got a little bit of story to tell you. Are you sitting comfortably? So the days were going by and it so happened that obviously Hubby at some point had to return to work. And how was I going to cope when he wasn't at home with me? In my state of trauma, I forgot how to breathe. I've mentioned this to you before. I would literally rest myself, hi Tiana, onto hubby at night when we were sleeping because I was trying to mimic his breathing pattern, if that made sense, because I kept, hyper, I kept hyperventilating. I did not know how to breathe normally. And then when I was trying to mimic his breathing, what would happen to me then is I'd make myself even worse and it would get to the point where I would almost pass out. I'd feel so lightheaded and so dizzy and so awful. Because let's face it, you can't do that. Breathing is a natural thing. So if you were to look at my chest now and see when it's going up and down, up and down, and do the same as me, you'd feel the same way. You'd soon start to get lightheaded because that's my normal breathing pattern, not yours. So that's what I started to do. And I could only sleep if I was literally wrapped around him. I just did not feel safe within my own body anymore. I really felt like my body had failed me. How could I have two healthy children and then this happened to me? What is wrong with you, body? What, what have you done? So I felt that's how I was feeling at the time. I'm being totally honest. What I will share with you is I never for one second thought, why me? Now, if you're someone who this has happened to and you thought that, no judgment whatsoever, because at that point in time, you're thinking all sorts. But just from my perspective, and perspective, trust me, is everything. I never thought that. I'd gone through life, and yes, I'd had hard times, but nothing like this. So I just figured, well, you know what? This is my portion. 
this is my portion. This is something that is obviously going to have to happen to me. But I'm going to go through this. I'm going to grow through this. I'm going to come out the other side. And I'm going to help other people. And within that, I started to get this overwhelming feeling that I needed God. And for those of you who know that I'm a Christian now, because at the time I wasn't, and hence why I say I needed God, I'm going to read something to you now. I've never shared this before. Who knows who Joyce Mayer is? If you do, you can pop it in the comments below. Well, I used to watch a lot of Joyce Mayer while I was going through my hard times. And uh, the one day I just couldn't take it anymore. Hiya, Jim. Hi, Sarah. Wave to you both. And I was in the kitchen cooking for my children. And I was doing something like some noodles or something, just something quick because my head just wasn't there. Nothing wrong with cooking noodles, by the way. We have some tonight. Um, <laughs> and I just remember thinking, oh, I really can't cope. How long can I just go on every day like this? It hurts. It physically hurts. Like my heart was breaking. It was horrible. So I could see that Joyce Mayer was helping a lot of people. And I was watching intently. And then they put their Facebook page up. And I thought, you know what? This is it. I'm going to reach out and I'm going to ask for help. And if you know me, that's one of the hardest things for me to do. I'm not good at asking for help at all. So if you are or were stubborn like me, please do ask for help. It's one of the best things you can do. And this is what I did. I got onto my laptop. I went onto the Joyce Mayer Ministries page. And this is what I read. Whew, take a deep breath. This is going to be emotional. I haven't read this out since I sent it. Whew, whew, whew. I'm not going to cry. Okay, ready? Please help me. That was the first line. Please help me. Didn't even introduce myself. That's how bad I was. Please help me. I'm sitting here watching Joyce Mayer Ministries on TV with my young son, he was one at the time, and my tears. I'm in tears and I'm in so much pain. I had a late miscarriage on January the 1st at 23 weeks plus two. And I had to deliver our daughter on January the 2nd. I've had very little help apart from family and friends who have been amazing, but I need God more than ever. And in need, I put capital letters. Remember, I was not a Christian here, guys. I have thought so much about getting saved since 2012. And after losing my daughter this year, I'm ready. And I put an exclamation mark. Please help me so that I can help others. Wow, I can't believe I was writing this. It's like I knew. I know that God has a purpose for me. Thank you so much in advance, Michelle Clark. Now, I sent that, and to be honest with you, I don't know. I, did, I don't know what I expected. I don't know. I was just in so much pain, and I had to reach out to someone. I needed God. That was it. And you know what? What day did I send this on? I sent it on the 3rd of February, and I received a message later the same day. And this is what I received back. Michelle, I am so sorry for the loss of your daughter. Know that we are covering you in our prayers. I didn't even know what that meant. I had no idea, but obviously I know now. We're so glad that your heart is open to receive God's love for you. We invite you to click on this link to invite God into your life. And then there was this link. So I'm thinking, oh, what's all this about? Link? What? So anyway, I clicked onto the link. And I said, I will do. This is my response. I will do. Thank you very much for responding. I could not believe it. And then they got back to me again and they said, you're welcome. And I was thinking, they're responding. Joyce Meyer Ministries, this is great. I thought, oh, I was having a great time. And they said to me, if you would like someone to personally pray with you, again, I knew nothing about prayer. You are welcome to phone our office in England. And they gave me their number and they signed off Team JMM, which stands for Joyce Meyer Ministries. So then I said... Thank you very much. I would like that. I was like an excited child. What is the dialing code? 
And I said, I really enjoy the link. And I'll talk a minute about what the link was. I really enjoyed the link. I found an amazing church. I was so happy. I was looking for churches online. I found a church today and I'm ready to accept Christ. And then I signed off. Guys, no word of a lie. I haven't been the same since. I have not been the same since I accepted the Lord in my kitchen while cooking noodles. There you have it. There you have it. You can accept him anywhere. There you have it. So that started my healing process. Okay, I'm going to tell you something else. Listen very carefully. I was broken. When I tell you I was broken, I was broken. I didn't recognize myself. I did not know who I was when I looked in the mirror anymore. Now, when you're in primary school, hi, Charlene, thanks for watching. Give you a wave. Do you remember watching? Do you remember watching? Do you remember singing? Um, that he's got the whole world in his hands, him. He's got the whole world in... Do you remember, you remember singing that in school, right? So we used to sing that in primary school. I'm 40 in January, so sorry if the younger people don't know what I'm talking about. You used to sing this in primary school. And do you remember the verse that said, um, he's got everybody here. And we all used to do this. <laughs> Everyone was getting really happy. Everybody here in his hat. Right, I remember that and I used to love it. And it's funny how you just sing things and you just do things. But then... When you are going through something as an adult and things come back to you, it's like, whoa, that's what that meant. That's when I realized who I belonged to. So I'm thinking, well, if I'm broken, I need to get fixed. And I went to friends, I went to family, and guys, don't get me wrong, they were a great help. But they couldn't help me, they couldn't mend me in the way that I needed to be mended. So... Then I had to find something else. I had to find someone else. I had to make sure that I was healed from the inside out. Not just superficial, not just I'll drink myself silly or I'll take these drugs. And you know what? I'll tell you something else. I considered smoking weed until I was silly. I'm just being honest in this life. The pain was that great. I went to friends and family members that I know do and I was like, listen, what's it like? Because I need to be numb. I'm sick of feeling my pain. I can't do it anymore. And I took antidepressants from the doctors, but I never actually took them, if that makes sense. I took them home, but I never put them in my body. And the one night I was sitting there with hubby and I'm rocking back and forth. I used to rock a lot. I was rocking back and forth and I was like, I can't do this, babe. I can't do this. Go to the cupboard. I screamed out, go to the cupboard, pass me the tablets. And he was like, are you sure? They've been sitting in there for months. I was like, I can't do this. And I was counting the months from when she died. I'm still like this. Pass me the tablets. And he was like, are you sure? He kept asking me. I was like, yes, I need them now. I don't want to feel anymore. This is horrible. And I wanted to drink alcohol, never really touched alcohol, never really been a drinker, and I don't smoke. So I was just thinking, I need to numb it somehow. And I thought to myself, and I did some research on how it would affect me. And basically, obviously, if you just knock yourself out silly with alcohol, you're going to wake up, you're going to remember it, you're going to feel worse. So that was a no-no. I already felt bad enough. I didn't want a vicious cycle. So it was back to the whole weed thing again. Oh, should I just try this? You know, I need to be calming. I need to calm down. That's what I thought. I need to calm down. And um, in the end, I started to take, I can't remember the name, but they gave me some pills to um, soothe me and just relax my muscles. If you're watching Hubby, yes, you are. And you remember what they're called, please type it. And I remember saying to the, to the doctor, but I don't want antidepressants. Are these antidepressants? And he was like, no, they're not. These will just relax you. And can I just say, no judgment in this life at all. This is my story. If you have or are taking antidepressants, no judgment on you. This is just something that I didn't want to do because I was so worried about the way things were interacting in my body. And remember, I already did not trust my body after what happened. So back to the story. He kept saying to me, are you sure? In the end, I said, come on, I need these tablets. He went to the medicine cupboard and he got them out for me. And I was shaking. I was shaking. I can remember it like it was yesterday. And he got me some water and I took one. And I'm telling you what, never 
again. There's a lady on, she used to be on there, um, called Felicity. She used to be on the 581 channel on Sky Television. And I was reaching out to everyone. And I know that Felicity has lost the daughter. I know she won't mind me saying this because she publicly talks about it. Um, an older daughter. I can't remember what it was too, but an illness. And I reached out to her. And she said, how old was your daughter? I said, I didn't really get to meet her like that. She died in my womb. And she said, call me. The calls are charged at blah, blah, per minute. I said, I can't afford that right now. We've got the funeral, saving for the headstone, blah, blah. And she said, listen, just call me. Don't worry about the charge. Call me. And I called her and I'm thinking, wow. So I've heard from Joyce Meyer Ministries. Now I'm speaking to another, like, you know, uh, well-known person on TV. But I was just reaching out to everybody. And she was like, listen... What, what what are you going through right now? Like, what state are you in? She's asking me to explain everything, kind of was. And I says to her, listen, Felicity, I've done something today. This is why I'm so shaky. I've taken an antidepressant and I don't think it's agreeing with me. Because all through the night, I felt like fire in my stomach. I don't know if that's supposed to happen, if anyone's taken them, but I felt this fire and it was horrible. And I literally felt like it was ripping me apart. It was like tearing out my stomach. And I remember putting my arm up in the middle of the night almost like I was trying to stop. I don't know what I was trying to stop, but trying to stop something. And my arm, it was almost like I couldn't see. It was all wavy. It was really weird. Those tablets were doing something to me and I was not enjoying it. I was going through enough already. And I was saying to her, they're not agreeing with me. I'm going to die. All this stuff. It was horrible. It was horrible. And my daughter had danced the next morning. So I made this phone call. I snuck out the dance call and made this phone call to Felicity. And she was like, look, I'm sure you'll be fine. But if you really feel, you know, that you, something's happening inside, go and see somebody. I said to my husband, take me straight to A&E once she's finished. I went and saw somebody again. Because remember, I kept saying to you, I uh, said to you last night, I kept going to A&E. They knew me, first name. I was there all the time. I always thought I was dying. The health anxiety was terrible. So I was there again. And they were like, Michelle, nothing is wrong with you. This is just your anxiety. This is just your mind playing tricks on you. He said, you can stop taking the medication now. I said, I'm not going to take them anymore. And are you sure I can stop now? Because I've heard if you stop, it can make things worse. And he said, Michelle, you've taken one. <laughs> you've only taken one tablet. It's okay. You can stop. Don't take any more after this. And we'll, we'll sort out more coping mechanisms. But I knew that I didn't want to do any more tablets now. All I wanted was God. That was it for me. I was not putting anything back in my system ever again. And I haven't touched anything like that since. So, back to my journey again. Those of you that say, oh, Michelle, you're so strong. Hey, cuz. It's not me. It's not me that's strong. One of my favorite verses from the Bible is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that comes from the book of Philippians. It's Philippians 4.13 to be exact. And seriously, it can never be truer. It's not me. I took my son to a stay and play group weeks after losing him. And I was like, hi, yeah, my name's Michelle, blah, blah, blah. Um, sorry, months, months. I'd already sought the Lord here. And I need to go to, I need to stay in play group. Um, can anybody point me in the right direction? And they were like, oh, we do one here. You're in the right place. And then when I told them my story, they were like, no word of a lie. They were looking at me like, why is she so bubbly? Did she say she just lost a baby? Like, they were looking at me like I was crazy. And this is what I'm saying. When I look back now and I know exactly what month that was and the month I lost Destiny and I, I can calculate and I think, how did I manage to do that? I know it was God working through me. Had to be, because I didn't have the strength. So, yesterday, we, we had some great news yesterday. We've been without a car for about two weeks now. There was a problem with the immobiliser, the battery and everything. So anyway, to cut a long story short, Hubby went to collect it yesterday so we have our car back. And I thought, oh, I have to give this analogy in my life today. So when the car started to play up, we instantly knew the car's broke, we can't use it. We're going to have to do something else in the meantime. So he was taking the kids on the bus to school. He was picking them up on the bus and coming back. But we knew we had to get the car to a garage, right? There was no point in taking the gar car to a dentist, right? Can you imagine if we turned up at the dentist? Can you have a look at my car, please? They'd be looking at us like, you what? Do you know that we deal with teeth here <laughs> and not cars? They'd be looking at us like we were crazy. So deep down, I knew because I was so broken, I had to go to who I was created by. 
yeah? So when your car is broken, you take it to the garage. The appropriate people are there to mend the car, to fix the car. Nobody else could fix me. It was God that I was created by, so I had to go back to him. That's how I got to who I am today. That's how I've got this smile on my face. That's how and why I'm glowing. That's why I'm able to help other people despite what's happened to me. So I thank you. I'm not saying don't tell me I'm strong. I love your compliments. I'm not saying, you know, um, just don't ever say that to me again. I'm just trying to get you to see that it's my faith that's brought me this far. I, I don't even want to try and take the, the, the glory for it because it's not, it's not me. It's not me. All glory to God. It's him that's brought me this far. I wake up and he carries me every day so that I can help other people. Like I said, so that I can help, I can smile, I can sing, I can dance, I can rejoice and not feel guilty. And to be honest with you, I haven't really had any sad days in the longest of times either because I know she's in heaven. She's in a better place than what we are right now. You know, all this COVID craziness going on. I know that I'll see her again. I know she's safe. She's in the safest place. What have I got to be upset about? But in the beginning, when I was early on in my faith, I did not understand any of that. And I'm just thinking, oh, my child's dead, my child's dead, my child's dead. But it's also about renewing your mind as well, which brings me on to mental health awareness. It's also mental health awareness day today. So miscarriage and any other type of trauma can really affect your brain and can really make you start viewing things in a totally negative way. Not because you're a negative person, just because of what's happened to you. So it's very important to get the correct counselling. I also went to a lot of counselling and renew your mind so that your perspective is different. If you see things negatively, then guess what? They're going to be negative. You're going to get a negative outcome. If you're always telling yourself, I can't do this, I'm rubbish at this, then guess what? You're probably going to be rubbish at it. You probably won't be able to do it or complete it or whatever it is. So it's all about speaking favour over ourselves and just speaking kind words to ourselves as well. Um, you, you really do need to practice this. This needs to be habitual. And you probably all know that as well as having bad habits, you can form good habits. And good habits are forms over a course of 21 days so if you get up every day for 21 days and do something positive know that that will soon become a good habit yeah so kick those negative thoughts to the curb because you don't need them kick them away i was speaking to another mom this morning in my inbox and uh, she was feeling a bit low and i just had to pull her up because that's what i'm here for there's no way i'm gonna go through what i went through Know that I've got other people that are struggling and just watch them. Just watch them sit in their mess. It's not happening. If you reach out to me, know that you're going to get help because that is what I'm here for. That is my purpose. I see that now. This is what the Lord wants me to do. This is why I had to go through what I went through to get to you. And my tagline, and I love to say this, I had to lose my destiny, meaning my daughter, to get to my destiny meaning my purpose, how will you get to yours? Ask yourself that question. And that's how I'm going to end the live this evening. Just think about what you're here for. If you're sitting there feeling really unfilled, unfulfilled right now, like there's got to be more than, than you know, than this. There's got to be more. What, what is life about? I'm not happy with what I'm doing right now. I don't really know what direction I'm going in. I feel stuck. I felt stuck so many times in life. You're not on your own if you're watching this and you're thinking, yep, that's me. I felt stuck so many times, especially when I became a mum, because I used to have a dance school. I used to have three businesses and I was just out there doing it all. And then I was just like, oh, housewife. And it's like, OK, now I'm just cooking and cleaning and looking after hubby and the kids. And I completely lost myself. But I'm here to tell you that you can be an amazing wife an amazing girlfriend, an amazing partner, an amazing husband, an amazing boyfriend, an amazing fiance, and you can be the best parent in the world. But guess what? 
you can't forget who you are. Because when you were created, you weren't just created for other people. You were created for you, for, for God's purpose. You're here to do something for other people. So figure it out why you're here. What are you here to do? I feel good that I know what my purpose is. I feel good. I'm just going to keep pushing forward and helping as many people as possible. Hey, cars, give you a wave. So um, what I will say to you is share this live. If you've enjoyed it, thank you so much for watching. Share, because I want them all shared out to help people. Because not everybody is at the stage where they can speak out and say, this has happened to me. But remember, you need to reveal it, to heal it. And remember that you are worthy of everything good. Okay, You deserve the best in life. You're not here to struggle. You're not here to be mediocre. You're here to go hard. You need to find what your purpose is. And once you've got it, hold it tight and run with it. Trust me, you will see many doors start to open because I have. Okay? Find your purpose. Remember, I had to lose my destiny to find my destiny. How will you find yours? I'm going to leave you with that thought. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll be with you again tomorrow for day three of Baby Loss Awareness Week. Take care. Bye.